Even though we are now five picks deep into our tier list series, pick number five may just have the craziest distribution of talent. And so as we get into this tier list, I think you'll understand. Because I feel like we've been seeing a common trend this entire time. The more we go down the list in terms of draft selection, the more even and just normalized the distributions become. But at number five, this rule was kind of completely thrown out the window. In today's video, we're going to be doing a fifth overall pick tier list. So comment down below what your list would look like. And of course, roast me down below when you think I'm wrong. I know many of you will. And I do want to preface that I do take potential into consideration, but I mainly focus on what the player has proven so far. So press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. Let's get straight into this tier list. All right, so we will start with Rafi Torres in 2000 and just go up. So when you think of a top five pick, you might think skill, you know, first line upside, all of which are definitely not associated with Rafi Torres. But believe it or not, Torres was actually a scoring star in junior, as he put up 43 goals, 91 points in his best season. And this offense would carry over to some extent as some people tend to forget that Torres put up back-to-back -back 20 goal seasons, including a 27 goal year. Combined with an extremely gritty game, so he had some talent. Now, unfortunately, as Torres' career would go on, he'd evolve into that bottom six grinder. And he's definitely gotten in some pretty terrible situations and suspensions. He's a headhunter now, and it's a damn shame that he's that way. But for that short stint, Torres was a very valuable player. But with that being said, taking his entire career into consideration, I will put Torres in meh. And if you haven't watched previous tier list videos, that kind of just means average. Next, in 2001, we had Stanislav Chistov. Hopefully I'm saying that right, Chistov, Cheese? I, I don't know. Um, as you can tell, there's so little data on Chistov, on the Cheese Man, that he doesn't even have a hockey DB picture. So I had to make my own. So. Thanks, Chistov. But Chistov is the first person to go, and congratulations into the Neil Yakupov bus category. But Chistov would really develop a name for himself after dominating the World Juniors, which would ultimately earn him the fifth overall selection. But basically, it was the same old story. He came to North America, which was a culture shock in itself. He had a couple decent seasons considering his age and tool set, but he started to regress very hard. So when the KHL was formed in Russia to be more stable with good pay, it was kind of a no-brainer for Cheeseman to go back to Russia, where he has nearly played 500 games. In 2002, we have the wit dog, Ryan Whitney, who is an obvious candidate for All-Star. Because in his heyday, Whitney was an elite puck-moving defenseman, who could snap a puck tape to tape better than anyone else in the league, or at least that's what he says. 59 points in his best season, an Olympic silver medal, and if it wasn't for ankle injuries he sustained throughout his career, Ryan would have had a longer tenure in the NHL. And so today, the Wit Dog has continued his career as he's the host of the Spin Chicklets and is killing it on the greens, and on the mic I guess. In 2003, we had Thomas Vanek and another obvious candidate for All-Star. And I feel like people tend to forget how dominant Vanek was on the Sabres. Multiple 40 goal seasons, 84 points in his best season, but surprisingly, not a single piece of hardware. And the more you look into Vanek's career, I could actually understand an argument for Superstar, but I think All-Star is where it is for Vanek. In 2004, we had Blake Wheeler, and this is an obvious one to me, which is Superstar. Now, because of his very unique physical stature, it took Wheeler a very long time to become that star player. In fact, believe it or not, it wasn't until 2012, so eight years after his draft year, did Wheeler truly break out into a star with 64 points. Which of course was on the newly formed Winnipeg Jets. As he spent four years after his draft developing in the NCAA, but today Wheeler is no doubt a superstar. Back to back 91 point seasons and about eight straight seasons of dominance for Wheeler. In 2005, we had Carey Price and this one's obvious to me, which is the Hall of Fame. So congratulations, you're the first person to make it to the Hall of Fame. Three gold medals, one silver, a Vesna, a William and Jennings, and a Hart and Ted Lindsay trophy, which in today's game is pretty insane. In fact, Price is the only goalie in the last 20 years to do so. Now, I feel like Price has been getting some pretty bad flack the last couple years because he hasn't been as consistent, 
But after his extremely impressive playoff performance this season, I feel like Price kind of shut down a lot of those haters. He still has a lot of hockey left in his career, so maybe he wins some more hardware, perhaps a Stanley Cup, we'll see. And there's no doubt in my mind that Carey Price will end up in the Hall of Fame, but what do you guys think? In 2006, we have the hot dog man, Phil the Thrill, and this one is obvious to me, which is Superstar. And personally, I've just found Kessel to be a specimen, as his athleticism is, is just fascinating. So on top of the fact that it looks like he's never stepped a foot in a gym, and eats cheeseburgers at least five out of the seven days in a week, Kessel is just a, you know, a freak of nature, as he has one of the most deadly releases in the entire NHL, is an elite skater, and has the hardware and production to back it up. Two Stanley Cups, 92 points in his best season, and a Bill Masterton award, so on top of that production and accolades, Phil is a great guy. Oh, he's eating a personal. cookie. He's eating a cookie. <laughs> hey, we better get him. You better get you on the bike there, buddy. If you're gonna keep eating these cookies, that's your fourth one today. <laughs> Phil, I saw you. you had three other ones in there before the media thing. In 2007, we have Carl Alsner, which I will put in meh, because in the last year we have seen a monumental downfall from Alsner, as he went from a respectable shutdown defenseman, who probably would have a spot on the above average tier to a massive disappointment in Montreal. So I guess we'll meet in the middle with meh. 21 points in his best offensive season, two World Junior gold medals, and this season, Olsner has almost spent the entirety of the season in the minors. In 2008, we have Luke Shen, and in my opinion, it is massive disappointment or massive letdown. And don't get me wrong, I really do like Shen, and I feel like he's always been able to kind of hold that depth player roster spot as I shut down defenseman, but by no means has he been able to live up to his fifth overall pick status. As he's bounced around almost 10 teams in his 12 year career, he doesn't provide any offense, and again, he's been utilized in that depth role. In 2009, we have Braden Shen, brother Luke, and weirdly enough, fifth overall in 2008 for Luke, fifth overall in 2009 for Braden, so that's pretty weird. I, always, I feel like I always forget about that. But unlike Luke, Braden has been a legitimate star in his career. 70 points in his best season, 5 medals, a Stanley Cup, and Shen plays a gritty two-way game supplemented with a great offensive tool set, so we will go all-star. In 2010, we have Nito, Nita Ryder, and quite possibly the worst NHL star from a top prospect in NHL history, at least in the modern era. Especially because he's that more pure offensive player, but Nino started his career by putting up one goal. So one goal, keep that in mind, one goal, no assists. So it's so a one point in 55 games, which is just insane. Now, luckily Nino would completely rebound his game with 25 goals, 57 points in his best season. And today Nino has developed into a very good top six winger. So to me, he belongs in above average. Good thing he developed after that very shaky start. In 2011, we have Ryan Strom involved in the very polarizing Everly transaction. Strom's entire career nearly went down the drain as he went from a very respectable center on the rise to regressing in all areas of his game. Because with the Oilers, he went from a 50 point centerman to a season where he put up two points in 18 games, which would get him shipped back to New York with the Rangers. However, luckily Strom has completely turned his game back around, as he put up a career high 59 points this season and is heading back into the right direction. Now personally I feel like he does belong in above average based on his play last season, but he hasn't been consistent enough in his career, so it's kind of a tough one, I'm going to put him in above average, but if he doesn't kind of replicate the success next season, I'd say he'd be more so in the meh category. In 2012, we have Morgan Riley, and if you guys didn't know, Morgan Riley sustained a very serious injury in his draft year that probably kept him out of the top three, because he actually only ended up playing 18 games, and of course this was the Nail Yakubov draft. But that being said, Morgan Riley took a couple years to hit that star status, but around that five year mark, we saw Riley really explode in terms of development. As he started producing at a high level, combined with a very respectable defensive and transition game. And last year, Riley would have played the best hockey in his career as he put up a career-high 72 points and played a very good defensive game. However, this year he has regressed pretty significantly. 
Now personally, I really thought Riley would follow up that year with another really good season, which surely would have earned him that superstar status. And I still think Morgan Riley can get to that next level, to that superstar tier, but because we haven't seen that consistency at that level yet, I'm gonna put Morgan Riley in all-star, but what do you guys think? It's kind of a tough one for me, but I do think he can get to that next level. He will just have to prove it. In 2013, we have Elias Lindholm involved in that massive blockbuster deal that sent him alongside Noah Hannafin to the Flames. Lindholm has really flourished on his new team. A career-high 78 points last season, 29 goals this year, and to me, Lindholm is an obvious candidate for All-Star. In 2014, we have Michael Del Cole, and to me, he goes into massive letdown. I was a pretty big fan of Del Cole, and I watched his development pretty closely, but he's just never been able to bring his talent to the next level. He's been able to produce in the minors, but he's had a dismal impact in the NHL. As he put up a career-high 10 points and 53 games this season, and unless we start seeing some more progression from Del Cole, he may be nothing more than that fourth line player. In 2015, we have Noah Hannafin, and to me, Hannafin goes into above average. And I still think Hannafin has what it takes to become an all-star, especially when you consider that the way Hannafin plays takes a bit longer to develop. A career high 33 points last season and an okay defensive game, but again, Hannafin has the tool set to be that all-around defenseman that can shut down your top lines and put up supplementary offense. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see if Hannafin has what it takes to be the next Giordano for the Flames. In 2016, we have Ole Ulevi, and he's an obvious candidate for Massive Letdown. And many of you will probably say bust, but what I will say, the main reason why Ulevi has yet to play a single game in the NHL yet is because he's had to deal with a magnitude of knee injuries, which has also caused multiple serious surgeries and delayed development. And especially when you consider that Kachuk was taking the next pick, well, it looks brutal. But what I will say, Yul Levy has been developing extremely well in the HL, 25 points and 45 games this season. He played really well in Liga and still has top 4 upside. On top of the fact that Yul Levy played one game in the playoffs this season, so we'll definitely have to wait a couple years to make a real judgement on Yul Levy. And in 2017, last but not least, we have Elias Pedersen, which is obvious to me, which is Superstar. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that Pedersen will end up in the Hall of Fame one day, but he just doesn't have the track record yet, nor the accolades to even have that conversation yet. But as a Canucks fan, I've never been more excited about a player in my entire life. And if you pay attention to analytics, you would know that Pedersen at the age of 21 is arguably a top 10 player in the entire NHL. As not only does he produce a nearly a point per game with a 0.95 point per game average in his career, who only a couple players in the last two decades have surpassed, but he also defends extremely well. Three medals, a Calder, and a very bright future. And Pedersen to me is someone who I can see putting up around 100 points per season with the ability to shut down other top lines. Now, you're probably going to call me a homer for this, and I don't blame you, but it's not even my opinion, but many analysts are comparing Elias Pedersen to Pavel Datsuk for a good reason. And I still think it's pretty crazy to make these insane comparisons, but keep an eye out for Pedersen. But anyways guys, let me know what you guys think down below, press subscribe for some more awesome content, Thank you guys so much for watching. The support has just been insane. Sorry for the lack of uploads recently, kinda. I've kinda delayed my upload here. I've been back to school, very busy, because I kinda try to aim for every four days to have a video, but because of school, I might have to go every five days, every once in a while, but hopefully you will sustain this, and just know your support really, really helps my, my current situation of, uh, of working two jobs and going to school. But anyways guys, thank you guys for all the awesome support. I hope all you guys are doing well. See you guys later.